Yeah, Cowboys signed Greg Ellis to the coaching staff. We were talking to him last uh, week, right about this time. I think it was the 220. And, uh, you know, he was talking about how much he loved playing with Mike Zimmer. And, you know, he had been coaching. So I asked him if he'd be interested in it. And, you know, he kind of gave a wave to it. And I was like, wow, does he not want it? Or does he just not want to talk about it? And it's it's clear now he just didn't want to talk about it. But that's exciting because he is one of the great Cowboys pass rushers of this century. And uh, I think he's a guy that can teach something to the young guys in a lot of ways. Yes, and, and the thing that he kept hammering home with us about Zimmer was the attention to detail, attention to detail, attention to detail, and how, like, in his own coaching that is what uh, that is the page he's taken out of the Zimmer book of coaching is just the next level attention to detail. And so if he's going to be another one of those guys, I mean, I think that's good. And just I, I, the, the former player thing is always cool. But I mean, I fell in love with him just in the few minutes that we got to meet. I'd never met him, never talked to him before. I had no idea like Greg Ellis, the person. And in 15 minutes chatting with him, like, oh, my gosh, this guy's amazing. I'd yeah, love what, to be around this. Yeah, dude. what Greg has done is uh, Zim has brought him in a couple of different spots. When Zim was at Cincinnati, he brought him in to help at you know training camp, and then when Zim got to Minnesota, he would bring him in over at Minnesota and stuff like that. So he's always kind of felt like that if he ever got back in, that he was going to give Greg the opportunity to to be a coach. And so I think I think Greg was just waiting for Mike to to get his opportunity, and and he yeah. knew he would have his opportunity as well. I think he's built for it. He, he just feels like a coach to me, you know, in the, in the way that everything's buttoned up and, the, and yeah. you know, the perfect fit w with Zimmer. Uh, I think there's some synergy in there that's going to pay off. He's a guy that can tell the players, listen, this guy, Mike Zimmer, might be getting after you, yeah. but it's worth it. Trust me. Pay yeah. attention to what he's saying. Yes, that's a great point. I think he will be a great buffer between player and coach, and at times Zimmer's going to tick some of these players off inevitably, yeah. and that'll ultimately be a healthy thing for the most part. But I think that it will be good to have that perspective. And I, he doesn't come across like super in-your-face guy. So there's, okay, not every positional coach on defense has to be in-your-face guy. The head of the defensive snake is in Mike Zimmer. But then sprinkled throughout, you got a couple of, hey, a little bit players, coachy, whatever. And I think all of that's good to have in there. Indeed. Okay, if you missed it yesterday, we talked in the 520 about why I, I do believe Jerry is being serious when he talks about going all in. And the reason is the the salary cap situation. Yeah. yeah. You talk about going to salary cap hell and you know, it's it's not permanent. You know, it's it's just one year. Um, but it appears the way the Cowboys contracts are structured, 2025 is going to be that year whether you like it or not. You're definitely not gonna be able to afford to bring in free agents from the outside. Um, you know, you're going to be doing your best to keep all of your good young players you have and not have to lose them. But there's, you know, quite a few solid veterans on this team that are making, you know, average or, you know, above average NFL contracts. When you look at that group of guys between like two and eight million bucks, you're just not going to be able to afford those guys. And what that means is young depth and old broken down depth. And that reminds me of 2010, 11 and 12 for the Cowboys. It's been a long time. They resist going into rebuilds better than any team in the NFL. They have a resiliency and ability to field a playoff roster as long as their quarterback hasn't got hurt for 15 straight years. Yeah. So they're really good at, at how they team build like that. But 2025 is coming for them. Um, I, I, there's only so much you can do with Dak's contract to restructure because now just with Dak, you're going to have a $36 million cap hit for 2025 on Dak Prescott. That's zero salary. His contract is over you still have $36 million to account with. And and he's not the end of it. There's an additional 25 if you add up all of the others. It's around a third or maybe a quarter of your overall salary cap bill for, for 2025. And I'm hoping that means that um, the Cowboys are going to go all in because Jerry's a smart businessman. And year to year, he and Steven have decided the worst thing that we can do right now is make a move today trying to go over the top that's going to impact our ability to make the playoffs in the next two, three, four years. They want a steady stream of playoffs. Well, now that you know 2025 is going to break our back in a massive way, we're already going to have to let some guys go. We might as well throw more money at this and then have 2025 be the cleansing year so we can emerge into 2026, maybe better than ever. And maybe even with a top 10 draft pick, depending on how, how things work out. So that that I just say, uh, as we'll do a little free agent primer here, uh, and you know some of the players that are available, if you want to be very aggressive in free agency, 
Are you guys thinking the all-in? Where are you at with the all-in thing at 877-881-1053? Do you think it's possible Jerry and Steve are about to surprise us next week with a shot of rumor rooskies that they're in for some of the biggest names in the NFL for maybe the first time since Namdi Asamoah in 2011? That's what it'd be, Brian. What do you say? I feel like, though, the all-in part of it, if they're going for a position, it would be the linebackers. That's where right. I kind of feel like that if if you start to if you start to talk about and could you see them actually doing that? I could, I could. I, I feel like though that that now uh, there's a lot of guys and gals over there that listen to our program every day, and they're like, "You guys continue to spend money that we don't have." Mm-hmm. But but exactly, but they will figure things out. They they're, do. They do have it smart. temporarily. They're very smart over there in, in the way they do some things. I mean, I I worked with a lot of those people over there for a long time, and I respect them. But I think if there was a position, because I the more I study these college these linebackers you know i think mike zimmer is going to walk in there and say listen we've got to get better in this spot and i think will mcclay is going to do the best he can to try and help him there the pro department so yeah i, I could see a, a pretty decent crop of linebackers and them going to get well, a better guy and then go get a young guy as well a veteran and a young guy yeah both i love that yeah because yeah, yeah. if you know if, if you're looking at this as a one-year opportunity before the window closes for a, a season or two you can't trust a rookie linebacker you, you can hope. No. Even if you're taking him in the top 10, he might just not be good enough to tackle anybody for the first 20 games of his career. Yeah, you have to figure out they cannot have another poor draft. That's that's they they absolutely cannot afford a, a poor draft. Yeah, and I I don't expect them to be in the market for the the top players at any position. Really, I don't think they're going to be wanting to break the bank the uh, excuse me break the bank for any one player. But I think the the quantity. We've seen in years past when they bring in a new defensive coordinator. Okay, we can we'll start to give you some of the ingredients that you want. We're not buying the the A caliber players. We're still going to be kind of bargain shopping here, but we'll go get four or five dudes if we need it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And when you have the consistency of a Dan Quinn here, you start to see less and less of that. They're not going to get as much in free agency. But early on, new defensive coordinator Zimmer's like, hey, here are a couple of things I need. Okay, we're not going to get you the best player at the market, but there's plenty of linebackers in the free agent class. You can go get the fifth best one and it is a major upgrade for you here with the Cowboys yeah that is what they do you know guys like Gerald McCoy and J. Ron Curse you know absolutely I would look at this roster if I'm Mike Zimmer and I would say guys with all due respect I don't need a bunch of guys who are like not even good enough to make a Pro Bowl but are solid veterans I need a stud linebacker you know, I need you to I need you to go get somebody that I know is going to be Johnny on the spot, understands the scheme better than the quarterback on the other side of the huddle and is going to arrive on the spot. Is that Bobby Wagner? I don't know. You know, it's it's it's, it's hard to say what age you, you fall off. A blog and the boys put together a top three and one of them is, is a linebacker, the Frankie Louvu. He's but he's he's more of a pass rushing off ball linebacker, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And he's he's considered to be probably the top linebacker on the market uh for the most part for by most lists that i see him or patrick queen i think if you could add you know maybe other pass rushing options if it works out like that i, I you know i'd like to see micah parsons more in that role and if he's going to be mugging the a gap as as much as mike zimmer has in the past maybe there'll be an opportunity for him to play in the the middle of the field a little bit more you also have that cornerback jalen johnson you know i that would be awesome if we can actually dream of could the Cowboys go out and say, no, we like Stephon Gilmore. We like that you want to be back, but we want to go to the the absolute best free agent cornerback available. And that if you're going all in, that's the dude you'd be targeting. I feel like that there's in the draft, if they want to go that route, it would probably be better than going to spend the money. Because the money to me has got to be for the linebacker. Or, you know, and or I you know, they need a center bad too. I know I'm focusing on defensive players right now. But to me, I I'm gonna spend the money on the linebacker. Because I, I just the the group that you currently are dealing with right now in the draft, there's there's some guys that are really good pass rushers, there's some guys that are uh, you know, good sideline to sideline guys. Some of these guys are really kind of banged up though, too. And that's the problem, you know. I mean, I, I don't if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I don't want to sit there and get one of these college linebackers and have him play five and six years, you know, and that's it. And then you're done. You know, they've had a little bit of a history of that coming about. You know, how about a linebacker you could sign for a couple of contracts, you know? And so I, I would I would venture to say that if they're going to spend money, it's going to be on the linebacker. I think they would draft a corner. The corner, 
the corner depth is really good in this draft. You know, and for the type of guys that Zimmer likes to play with too, the guys with length, the guys that can play press man. Yeah. He he could find him a couple of guys in the draft. Now, the problem that Dallas has is they don't have a lot of picks in the middle of this draft. So you've got to make a determination if you're going to be willing to dive out of there, out of your spot at 24, go back, pick up an extra three, pick up a four to kind of navigate this thing. Hmm. So that's kind of where I think they're going. 214 says, uh, can you draft giving a bleep? <laughs> I don't know if you could draft. Uh, I, I think maybe some of the fans are hoping that gets picked up in, in the April draft. Uh, free agent, a linebacker, not grapefruit. Okay, appreciate that. Sorry, but the fifth best linebacker doesn't sound like going all in to me. Yeah, Chief's calling BS on this all in thing, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be all. I mean, all in is going to get a Jalen Johnson. It's who's the who are the best players out there. We're going to throw money at it, and we're going to bring these guys in premium positions premium players and that comes with premium dollars they're not going to throw around premium dollars i feel very strongly about that you will get a quantity of dudes you'll get a, probably a couple of free agent linebackers and they will be upgrades from what you have uh you, you hopefully you get a defensive tackle in there as well there's a couple of good defensive tackles there veteran wise on the free agent market you're not going to break the bank for those guys but those make you better i mean i still think you can get a couple of linebackers here that you're not spending all the money for and a, and a defensive tackle or so and it's really upgrade your defense and then you go into a draft where you say okay there's corners here there's linemen here there's centers here that's where we will spend our draft capital but they're not going to go all in financially because I all in, we know what that means in free agency. You're going to look at big time names, guys making big time money. The Cowboys will not be in on any of those guys. How about Antoine Winfield speaking of big time names? We can yeah. dream, can't we? I mean, that's the kind of safety that could make Mike Zimmer's defense really hum. Yeah, Mike, but Mike's is more about the interchangeable players at safety. Hmm. So you got to be able to cover and you got to be able to play down. I think with Winfield, though, you got a guy that could really play down well. Need to watch him play in some coverage situations and see how well that is. Might be have a breaking rep news report here. Tiger Woods is in a golf cart. Uh oh, and he'd had Dunsky. some. He'd had some back. Uh, he's riding with a, a marshal right now on the course there at the the Genesis uh, uh, Invitational. Yeah, he might be going in. Tiger Woods back might have just uh, given out on him, and he's going back in. He might withdraw here. That's a shame. He was playing well. He birdied the first hole, had a couple of pars last time I looked at his scorecard. Uh, but he's plus two right now as we speak. But yeah, uh, that that looks to me very much like he's taking a ride back to the clubhouse. Well, I mean, the back was so bad last night. That's what contributed to that hosel rocket that he hit yeah. on eighteen off that tree, uh, and then he hit a miraculous third shot to get on the green and get in for bogey on eighteen. But yeah, I would not be surprised at all if those back spasms are going to prevent him from playing as he continues to recover. Eight months ago now, he had a, a a spinal fusion type of surgery, and for the first time, he's trying to figure out if he can play some golf. Kyle Duggar, the safety of the Patriots. Cameron Curl, uh, safety of the Washington Commanders. That's 20 and 21 on the Pro Football Focus uh, free agent rankings. I just know that at center and linebacker, you have to guarantee that you get a significant improvement next year, so yeah. I'm trying to go shopping in free agency in both spots yeah. and then let the best player available fall to me. I think you could do that tacking on another 25 or $30 million to your payroll and then flushing those player contracts in 2025 and, and look to rebuild after that. Maybe with Dak, maybe not. You know, but this this whole thing needs to be rebuilt now. The offensive line has needed one for a, a couple of seasons, and I'll keep my fingers crossed, Jer. You know, as we're going to watch here over the next ten days, the cards are going to start to be revealed, and as those players start to come off the board in free agency, if we hear nothing but crickets from the Cowboys, not tied to any players, yeah. we'll know that once again they're waiting for the C tier free agents to go cheap and hope to nail the draft and build a championship. And at that point. I'll wave the white flag on believing for 2024 and 2025 because ain't no way. You know, it's coming for you. The salary cap reaper will come for your roster, whether you like it or not. Bad seasons are coming for you in the NFL, whether you like it or not. The best ones plan for it and maximize when it's about to happen so you can have a clean slate with your salary cap and take advantage of a great opportunity to get a, an elite player at, at a position and need there in the top half of the first round. 